Welcome to the credit video for Let's Play Rise, Son of Rome. I'm Burning Dog Face. <laughs> and it took an awful lot for me not to yell about how awesome it was when uh, Nero got killed in such an extreme way. Hot damn. I'm gonna go ahead and guess, before I ever see the comments, that that's not how Nero died in real life. Uh. That was one of the best heroic sacrifices I've ever seen in my life. Well done, Marius. It's not every day you save all of uh, civilization. Even if you do have to give your life to do it. at the end of the reason I was still alive even though I'd been stabbed all those times I was getting sort of sort of halfway as a joke but yes literally in the side the game mechanics the reason I was still alive was because I was getting the health bonus from all those execution kills must have been a dozen guys a dozen and a half in that list not list in that uh, corridor. What do I say about this game? You know, I really wasn't that impressed with it at first, since it felt like you could just mash your way through the combat quite freely. Uh, pretty much every single enemy ended with a uh, a quick time event. A QTE stood for. I realized I didn't explain that the last time I used it. And, uh. Well, the game pretty much consists of running from point A to point B and killing a whole bunch of dudes at either end. Uh. Interspersed with the occasional, you know, little side thing, like using the Scorpio or throwing your spears or, uh. Okay, the formation stuff was actually pretty cool. I always enjoyed those. You get your shields up and everybody throws a spear at once. Those are kind of rad. You know, I distinctly remember that uh, the credits for Crisis were one, really, really long, and two, they just looped endlessly until you hit a button, so I'm, gonna, I'm keeping an eye out for that. Did I miss the voice acting? I haven't seen any voice actors listed. Odd. Um... But as I got further into the game... You know, it really didn't get much less repetitive, but the actual combat itself got a lot deeper. Or, you know, it's, it becomes more than just alternating between mashing X and Y. You really need to get the timing on the blocking down really tight by the end of the game. Particularly when there's like four or five guys around you, some of them have unblockable attacks, some of them don't. I'm pretty sure by the end of the game, every enemy you encounter has at least one unblockable attack. Even the guys with just one axe. I, I think they just phased out the regular guys for the, the hooded dudes with the big axe. 
Then along comes the guys with the wolf heads and the giant uh, axe. Or the guys with the two hammers and things get really fucked up. You know, it's funny. I think... I think the guys with the axe and shield towards the end of the game were the same guys we'd been seeing an infinite number of times at the beginning of the game, just with uh, a helmet on. <laughs> The storyline is interesting. Uh, I enjoyed it anyway. Uh, you, you don't really see a lot of games set in ancient Rome. The graphics, of course, are amazing. Which is kind of to be expected with uh, Crytek making a game that is more or less explicitly designed to uh, show off the graphical p uh, potential of a brand new console. I just kept getting struck by little details like the way the blood runs down a guy's chest after you cut him. You know, but it's not even like a pre-rendered, it's not even like a predetermined thing. Where you hit them it determines where the cuts are, and that's kind of crazy. I mean, it wasn't amazing. It wasn't like a... Rise was not built in a day. It was an arduous campaign lasting seven years, and none of it would have been possible without our loyal friends, family, and fans. You honored us with all your support. Really know any of these names, like any of them, which is unusual for a modern uh, video game. Well, having it be filled with voices you don't recognize does kind of make it feel more authentic for some reason. You know, so it's not like, oh, that's Nolan North. You just think of that as Marius's voice, or whoever. Um. I do have to admit, I'm kind of bad at this. <laughs> I am not the best at this game. But I really enjoyed uh, coming along for the ride. I'm glad I was able to uh, overcome all these challenges. I enjoyed myself, but it's a bit more of a difficult question to ask whether I would recommend this game. Uh, first off, if you don't like, uh, you know, if you're one of those people who despises quick time events, stay as far away from this game as you possibly can. Like, if you roll your eyes every time you have to mash buttons in a cutscene, this is not the game for you. Because, you know, I mean, think, think about it. Quick time events are literally the only way you have to, uh, to restore your health other than reaching the next story beat. Um, the combat isn't exactly like anything else I've played before. You know, it's it's not like fast and loose like a God of War or what have you. It's not focused on intricate combos the way something like Devil May Cry is. If I had to point to something, I might say that it's kind of like uh, the Batman Arkham combat. Except that uh, I think this is a bit less forgiving than that. Like, there's a thing in that game where if you hit the counter button when nobody is currently attacking you, Batman will get into this like little fighting pose and then go back into a standing position. 
But while you're, he's doing that, it lasts like maybe a second. You can't move, and you can't uh, you can't trigger any further counters. So if you block too early, and then the uh, the hit comes, you get punched in the face. This game had a lot of things like that, where like if you hit the block button when an unblockable attack is coming. Uh, Marius raises the shield, and there's nothing you can do to stop it from hitting you. I did think it was interesting that the, uh, you know, the, when they revealed that you could block, you could actually block the so-called unblockable attacks by hitting it right before it comes up. I was hoping to do a uh, one last multiplayer run of this game with the nano suit on, just for fun. Holy shit, are these good credits ever taking a long time? Been keeping an eye out. I don't think it's started over yet, but you know, modern games have a lot of people in them. Uh, it's like how you uh, can watch the credits of a movie for like five minutes. Particularly if they're heavy in, you know, CGI. Although, you know, seven years, yeah, there's going to be a lot of people involved. I think if you like, uh, you know, sword play, if you like close combat, if you like some, uh, if you like finishers that are brutal without being Mortal Kombat levels of over the top, then, uh, I'd say you might want to check this game out. It's an interesting story. If you're interested in checking the game out, then yeah, I recommend you play Rise, Son of Rome. Uh, if you have your doubts, you might want to pass, because while I had a good time, it's hardly the best game I've ever played. I did really enjoy myself, though, so, you know, for what it's worth, there's that. <laughs> I suppose I should mention you might not want to play this if historical accuracy is your thing. Given the, the way that uh, Venser's prodigy was practically tearing his hair out of the comments talking about how wildly inaccurate this was. <laughs> I am looking forward to seeing what he has to say about Nero being impaled on a giant sword. Who was Aquilo? I'm hoping that if they're doing the alternate language, uh... Oh, sorry, kind of spaced out there. I'm hoping that if they're doing the alternate language casts and nothing else, and it's, uh, towards the end. I did think it was weird that there was an oracle chained up in Basilius's uh... uh workshop showed up that one time to deliver a cryptic message. It is a bit disappointing that the thing about only Damocles can kill Marius and only Marius can kill Damocles just meant that Marius is going to have to kill himself. Do 
given that, uh... Well, I had this idea in mind where it was going to be like, Marius would kill a guy and put his armor, put the armor of Damocles on him. And then you'd go, hey, I caught this guy that you were looking for. Marius kills Damocles, and he gets uh, some kind of commendation for it. And that's how he ends up with the rank of general. Well, he's with his family now. Justice has been done, and Rome will prevail. I noticed that the, uh... The you know the closing speech there the closing monologue carefully mentioned that the city prevails uh, for thousands of years the city remains for thousands of years without mentioning that uh, you know the empire of Rome fell long long ago and the city of Rome is now part of the democratic nation of Italy. But, you know, I, even as they said that and I acknowledged it in my mind, I, uh, I understood that they did it that way because they were, you know, they were trying to put a happy spin on this. <laughs> They're trying to put a happy spin on the ending of the game that required you to kill yourself. Man... Ah, damn, maybe we don't have time for the, uh, nano suit thing. Oh, fuck it, I don't know, maybe I'll come back someday and, uh, take a look there. Do, like, a special standalone video. Preferably after, uh, taking some time to re-familiarize myself with the, uh, controls. With that part in mind, I guess it's uh, very nice of them to color code the uh, prompts for the the uh, shields. remember which Russia uh, say which Russian country we can't remember which European country uh, Crytek are from I don't think it's Sweden oops rubbed my chair against my desk got a new chair not squeaky the leather is kind of a uh, full fake leather anyway Picking up my phone. Crytek. Crytek is German, based in Frankfurt, Germany. that when uh, Vigil Games went out of business, Crytek hired a bunch of people who used to work for them. The, uh, the Darksiders people. So that's cool.
I think it was like a happy coincidence that Vigil Games went out of business just as uh, uh, Crytek are opening a studio in uh, I want to say that's the Austin branch we saw mentioned in these credits. Alright, I'm going to wait for one more heading, and then I'm going to push the button. Because I think I saw Sophia earlier. Yeah, you could have just put these in a big cloud instead of a... Oh! That is a new one, Crybaby. Only four babies? Born in seven years? Wow. Well, congratulations to those uh, families. Yeah, this has got to be the end. When the logos start showing up, you know it's the end. Can't believe this took the full 20 minutes. I don't think that's ever happened before. Even the music has stopped by this point. They're just going to keep saying that after every individual software that they've, uh, ever even mentioned that they've used. Oh, for God's sake. Really? Squish Image Library. What an odd name. You're just saying it twice in a row. What the fuck? <laughs> ah! It's done! I hit the button. Oh, that's queer. Oh, shit. Oh, Aquilo was winter. That's why. Wondered where his name was. I did remember he got a name, I didn't remember what it was. Formation be damned. What a moron.
Oh dear. Yeah, I, guess, I would imagine his job was much easier back in the day. Well, I'm Burning Dog Face, and on behalf of myself, the late General Marius Titus, and his BFF Vitalian, High Commander of Rome, I thank you for joining me for Let's Play Rise, Son of Rome. And I hope you've enjoyed, uh, coming along this journey with me. Just as I hope you'll join me for my next video series. Until then, have yourselves a great day, Burning Dog fans. Later!